Hi friends, and welcome back to Book Club with Ms. Dub. Today's the day. We're finishing Solomar, the Sword of the Monarchs. Thank you guys so much for hanging in and enjoying this whole book with us. Um, we are going to be reading the final chapter, chapter 24. So let's get started. But before we do, I want to make sure that all of you guys are subscribed because in my my little analytics, it says that 93.7% of you guys that are watching are not subscribers. So take a second and go ahead and click that subscribe button, please, so that we can read more books together and we can grow our channel and more books can be seen by viewers and it can show up in their feed and all of that good stuff. And also, if you're enjoying this book, um, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to leave some comments. I love to hear what you guys have to say about your favorite characters, what you thought about the book, um, you know, all of that good stuff. So let's go ahead and jump into the final chapter, chapter 24 of Solomar, The Sword of the Monarchs by Pam Munoz Ryan. Chapter 24, Princess of the World. Two weeks later, Solomar stood at the top of the veranda with her quinceanera court lined up two by two on the steps below her, ready to descend to the royal garden in a grand entrance. Senora Vega and the other seamstresses came up the line, fluffing the skirts of the dresses, including Maria's turquoise one and Estella's pistachio. They reached Salomar and fussed over her new coral gown, which was as beautiful as the first one. And then they took a few step backs, steps back to admire it. Thank you, said Salomar. I don't know how you all made another in such a short time. You saved the day. It was the least we could do for the heroine who saved the kingdom, said Senora Vega. Otherwise, we might be sewing for King of Aino, and that would have been a sad state. But let's not talk about that on such a glorious evening. Lazaro flew to Solomar's shoulder, his feathers embellished with ribbons, courtesy of Zarita. Senora Vega handed the almost new princess a bouquet of flowers and tulle in which Zarita was nestled, the doll now wearing a gown that matched Solomar's. Muchas gracias, Senora Vega, squealed Zarita. I love what you did with the overskirt and the bodice. And the circular flounce on the sleeve is divine. Do I look lovely? Of course, said Senora Vega. I knew exactly what you would like. Zarita, you talk with Senora Vega? Asked Solomar. Didn't I tell you? I speak seamstress, said Zarita. Now, promise not to put me down for a minute tonight, especially during the dancing. Solomar smiled. I promise. She looked out over the festivities below. It was a glorious night. Lanterns glowed, the village flags fluttered in a gentle evening breeze, and the violins hummed as the musicians tuned them. In the garden, an enormous dance floor had been laid, now empty except for one unoccupied chair for the shoe ceremony. The entire kingdom had gathered to watch her become a princess of the world and be officially crowned Princess Solomar Secoro Reyes Guadalupe of San Gregorio. Her eyes welled with tears of gratitude for a day that only a few weeks ago she didn't want to happen. A burst of laughter erupted from a group of young men and women surrounding Campayon. He was leaving in a few weeks for Puerto Rivera to rejoin La Quinta and travel the world. Everyone wanted to wish him well and say goodbye. Campeon was more animated than Solomar had ever seen him and holding everyone captive, most likely by recounting the story one more time of how they, Solomar, Berto, and Campeon, saved the kingdom. The orchestra started the procession music. King Sebastian and Queen Rosalinda walked to the center of the dance floor. He carried his shoebox, and she held a satin pillow, cradling a crown. Solomar couldn't find where it was written that only her father should participate in the shoe ceremony, or that only the king could crown her, so she asked for both of her parents to do the honors. Her court proceeded down the steps, the girls and boys wearing wreaths of dahlias and ivy. Berto looked a little stiff and uncomfortable in his white suit and vest, but stood tall and proud. Salomar had been overjoyed when he agreed to come and bring his mother and sisters. After the entire court 
formed a semicircle around the empty chair on the dance floor, King Sebastian raised his arms and the crowd hushed. The orchestra began a dramatic and triumphant march. Slowly, step by step, Solomar descended to the dance floor and her designated spot. With her skirt and its many layers of tulle, she carefully sat down, but one of the chair's legs was shorter than the other. It rocked back and forth, and for a moment, Solomar teetered. Berto stepped up. I can fix that, he whispered, pulling a handkerchief from his pocket, folding it into a wedge, and sliding it under the chair leg. Solomar grinned. The king knelt in front of Solomar, slipped off her flat shoes of childhood, and opened the shoebox. He fitted and tied the high-heeled shoes that symbolized her bridge into womanhood, a fancy wedge version of an all-terrain sandal. The queen, with tears in her eyes, fastened the crown on Solomar's head. Everyone in attendance erupted in applause and cheers. Her father held out his arms for the first dance. As they waltzed, he said, this is the happiest of days for me, and much of it is because of you, Solomar. Why did you risk so much? For San Gregorio, our heart and our home. His eyes brimmed and he nodded. Speaking of homes, we are officially adopting Valle Granada as part of the kingdom of San Gregorio. They are no longer kingdomless, and we're investing in a reservoir system to help bring bear to help Berto bring the river water to their valley. That's wonderful, but Father, I'd also like to explore the possibility of using the river as a faster route to the port someday, said Salomar. The king nodded. That would benefit San Gregorio and Valle Granada. Did you know that pomegranates have medicinal uses proving beneficial in treating fevers? And the fruit juice is an age-old remedy for memory loss. Abuela is thrilled. Solomar glanced to the side of the dance floor where Abuela, Doña Flor, and Berto's mother had their heads together talking. Solomar smiled. Of course she is. I want to hear more, said King Sebastian. But first things first, he stopped dancing and searched the dance floor. Where is Campayon? He and I made an important decision last night, but he wants to be the one to tell you. Here comes Senor Verde. Let me hand you off to him for a few minutes and I'll find Campeon. Senor Verde cut in. Oh, the day we've been waiting for. It's so lovely. By now, of course, everyone knows you fooled King Aveno, but you were brilliant. But I've been puzzling over something. Tell me exactly. Tell me how exactly did a vicious whirlwind come forth from the forest at that precise moment? Was that somehow your doing too? You know how I love these little tidbits of information. Um, well, I... Solomar hesitated. Excuse me, Senor Verde. Campeon took Solomar in his arms and swept her across the dance floor. I saved you from the shadow. Thank you. What am I going to do without you, she said, laughing, but not entirely joking. When she looked at his face and how happy what he was, she set aside for the moment how much she would miss him after he left. Now, what is this very important decision father mentioned? Campeon laughed. First, congratulations, Sully. This is a great party. You're officially royalty and it suits you. You were born to lead. And that brings me to the news. He raised his eyebrows, teasing. Are you sure you want to know? Of course, tell me. He stopped waltzing, took her hand, and led her from the dance floor to a nearby stone bench where he faced her. Campayon took a deep breath and smiled. As you know, I'm leaving on La Quinta when they dock again. I signed on for four years. I'm going to talk father into creating a transport fleet for San Gregorio, although he doesn't know it yet. If we can sell goods in one port, we can export and import from around the world. Is that the news? Campeon shook his head. As you're aware, in San Gregorio, only a prince can become king. So father and I signed legal papers last night. While I'm gone, 
You will be the Prince Regent of San Gregorio. The what? Prince Regent. It means prince in the absence of a sovereign. Salomar's heart beat a little faster. You and father can do that? We can, and we did. And that will make you the first in line to the throne. Father is planning to step down in three years when you turn 18. So at that time, you will become the king regent until I return from my travels. He grinned and winked. That is, if I return. You're a princess, almost a prince, and the king to be all in one day? cried Zarita. Lazaro took to the sky, twirling and whistling. Salomar studied Campion's face to make sure he wasn't joking. I will have a say, she asked quietly. He nodded. Yes, Sully, you will have a very big say. She murmured, King Salomar. I like the sound of it, he said. Salomar looked around the festivities. She spotted a she spotted Abuela, who blew her a kiss. She found her father and mother, who waved and smiled. Salomar hugged Campeon. I like the sound of it, too. And that is the end. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this wonderful book, Salomar, The Sword of the Monarchs. As a reminder, this book is up for voting um, in the Texas Blue Bonnet Award um, nomination. So this is one of the nominee books and I am going to find the link um, for the voting. And I know it's open in January and it closes at some point in February of 2024. So at the time of recording, uh, we are either within the voting period or very close to it. And it will end, you know, like next month, uh, early in the month. So I'm going to find the link, put it in the, in the description below. Um, so click that link if you want to vote for this to possibly be the Blue Bonnet award winning book of the year. And um, please remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Please subscribe <laughs> and leave me some comments. Tell me what your favorite parts were. Tell me what parts surprised you or who your favorite character was. Or tell me any other books that you want me to read on the channel. Um, I love doing this. I'm so thankful for you guys. And like I always say, I can't wait to read again with you soon. Bye.